Hey, how's it going? Uh, just a quick video that I wanted to um, just turn around and make a video and edit it and quickly post it to my channel today because there was some very interesting news that came out today from Canon that in some ways um, invalidates and also validates some of the things that I said a month ago where if you've uh, followed this channel of mine about a month ago, I put up a video where uh, I'll link to it up here, where I shared some thoughts and some ideas and some, I don't know, some wild ideas about what Canon may or may not be doing in 2020 with regard to their line of full frame DSLR and mirrorless cameras, coming very much from the perspective of someone like me who has been shooting with a Canon 5D Mark IV for almost four years now. I have probably squeezed more value out of this one single camera than any camera I've owned in my life. It's an awesome, true workhorse of a camera um, that has just been fantastic for me. I'm actually filming on, I'm looking at it right now. So the news that came out today, the thing that got me you know, really interested and made me want to post a quick follow-up video to that video today is the news that Canon is going to be releasing a new uh, what appears to be a flagship mirrorless camera, a new high-end mirrorless camera that's going to be named the EOS R5. Now, perhaps it's because I've done a fair amount of brand work and product design work, and I've also done a little bit of naming uh, in my professional career, um, but why five? Like, I'm really interested to know what five means. Like, is five somehow like a parallel from the 5D line of DSLRs or, does it somehow communicate like you know 50 something megapixels or what exactly is it? Well, you know, it probably doesn't mean anything like a lot of uh, naming conventions and technology. It's probably just something that sounds good from a marketing perspective. Um, and, and sometimes that's okay. So at any rate, the new uh, EOS R5, Canon put out a what's called a development uh, announcement today. It's basically just a way for a company just to say, hey, we're working on something. We can't tell you everything about it, but we're gonna show you a couple of photos, put out a video as well, just to kind of you know stoke the, the flames and just get people interested and let them know what's going to be coming later this year. I would imagine partially to kind of keep, keep people in the flock, right? Keep people who've been shooting with Canon for a long time like me, um, you know, keep them interested and keep them engaged and uh, well, Encourage them to start saving money too, probably, because I imagine this R5 is probably going to be a fairly expensive camera. And I say that because of some of the specs that they announced today. They didn't include everything, but they did include some very interesting little tidbits of information. So first and foremost, one of the things I'm very much interested to hear about is the fact that this camera is finally going, the R5 is finally going to have in-body stabilization, which for Canon is actually a pretty big deal because Canon has, I don't know if it's a philosophical thing or what it is, but Canon has always uh, kind of uh, relegated, um, for lack of a better word, image stabilization to their lenses, right? Uh, they've had digital IBIS and you know, some of their cameras, I use it on the Canon M50, but it's digital, right? It's just, it's mushy. It does really weird things with your video footage. If you've ever shot using it, you know what I'm talking about. It's nothing compared to in-body stabilization because in-body stabilization will allow you to do things that right now, creatively, you're not uh, as easily able to do. For example, things like shooting in low light at slower shutter speeds, things that typically require you to just crank up your ISO just so that you're able to get uh, enough uh, sensitivity in the sensor to be capturing in low light. But with that in-body stabilization, hopefully that means you'll be able to shoot um, in low light at the exposure settings you want at lower ISOs and still get sharp photos because of that stabilizing that's happening within the body of the camera as opposed to it just being uh, the responsibility of the lens. I think it's also gonna be a really big deal for video, especially if you're shooting handheld, vlogging style, B-roll, whatever it is that you're doing. Having that uh, in-body stabilization should really help uh, create smoother, less jittery footage uh, so that you don't have to turn on digital IBIS or you know anything like that. So in-body stabilization, big deal, sounds amazing. Uh, can't wait for that. Also of interest is the fact that Canon has announced that this camera will have a new CMOS, CMOS? That's how you pronounce it, right? Well, let's just say it is. CMOS uh, sensor and image processor, which getting back to that video that I posted a month ago is actually a pretty big deal because Canon has 
historically been recycling some things. Like they recycled the sensor from the Canon 5D Mark IV and put it in the EOS R and the sensor from the 6D Mark II and they put it in the EOS RP. But for this camera, the EOS R5, it sounds like it's going to have a completely new sensor, though they aren't saying what the resolution is going to be. Why? I don't know. It does say it's going to be a new sensor, new image processor, which hopefully means improved dynamic range. That would be amazing for someone like me who does a lot of uh, landscape photography. I would absolutely love that. At the end of the day, though, uh, new sensor technology is always, for me at least, welcome news. Really excited to hear that. And then there's the big crazy bullet point in this announcement, the one that really sticks out, that really makes you kind of sit up and take notice, and that's the fact that this camera is going to be 8K capable. Now, I don't know about you, but I mean, I can barely take advantage of 4K right now because I shoot pretty much everything in 1080. This is in 1080. I've never really felt that much of a need to go above 1080, though I would like to be taking advantage of 4K. But because I am, you know, I, I just love Canon products and I've been using their cameras for a while, 4K with Canon has never been particularly great because the, the focusing modes aren't as sophisticated with 4K as they are with 1080. Uh, there's also the issue of cropping and all of that. And quite honestly, 4K Canon footage is just not as good as 4K video footage from other cameras. It just, I don't know. It's just never looked quite as good. It's just marginally better than 1080. So I've always kind of stuck with 1080. So the news of having like 8K availability just sounds completely insane to me. Like, why would I ever need that? And I mean, what? It was just like not that long ago that Blackmagic came out with the 6K and everyone kind of freaked out about that uh, with their uh, pocket cinema camera. But now it looks like Canon is going to be leapfrogging Blackmagic in one way or another by introducing an 8K video mode. Now, whether that is you know 8K with, a, I'm gonna assume it's 8K with uh, a crop, a pretty good crop, um, maybe not internal, maybe that's recording to an external monitor of some kind, whatever it is that they're going to do, it's going to support 8K in some way, shape or form. But what I hope that means though, is that they're going to you know, really solidify their 4K video options. Like, I mean, getting, you know, 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second with no crop, full frame, 4K video. That would be pretty amazing for, you know, capturing B-roll for slow motion type of footage. That would be fantastic. If 4K was just true, awesome 4K with, you know, really good focusing performance, things like that, then I would, that would be great. And 8K is just whatever. Like <laughs> it's a marketing bullet point, you know, for me at that point. I would, I just want really good 4K in other words. So anyway, that's how I feel about video with it. But nonetheless, I mean, that's kind of crazy when you think about it, 8K and a Canon camera. I mean, Canon hasn't been really known for being a strong video contender, right? I mean, I remember back in the day when, I sound like a grandpa talking about this, but I remember when uh, Canon released the uh, 5D Mark II and there was an episode of House, uh, that Fox show where um, they filmed everything with a 5D Mark II. And it was such a groundbreaking episode at the time because it proved that you know a digital DSLR could kind of sort of be used with probably a lot of uh, assistance and help to uh, to create broadcast footage, which was unheard of at this time, that a consumer camera could be used in that way. And ever since then, you know, video, at least in their consumer or prosumer or whatever you want to call them, uh, like 6D, 5D, uh, and their mirrorless cameras, has just never been all that exciting compared to other camera companies like Sony has been doing some pretty awesome things with their video capabilities, uh, not to mention uh, Panasonic, you know, Lumix, of course. And um, I don't know. So that's just my thoughts on video and uh, really looking forward to learning more about that and seeing what's happening there. Now, the other interesting news that they came out with today is the fact that they released you know, just like a very bullish statement about their RF lenses. In other words, like they're just kind of like throwing it out there and they're just saying, we are coming out with seven new RF lenses this year which is you know, pretty incredible. Um, they've been releasing lenses pretty quickly, it seems like, over the past couple of years, and seven within a single year sounds pretty amazing to me. 
They are very expensive lenses though, unfortunately, because I mean, they are high quality, but at the same time, Canon kind of has a monopoly on RF right now because the other lens manufacturers haven't really had a chance to catch up to it. So I'm really looking forward to see what Sigma can do once they start to come out with some RF mount lenses and hopefully undercut Canon by releasing some art lenses that have you know just as good you know image quality and are sharp and you know for like a thousand dollars less that would be pretty amazing the lens that canon announced today that's going to be coming out this year that really made me kind of sit up and take notice was the fact that they announced a 100 to 500 millimeter telephoto lens now this is my uh ef 100 to 400 lens and this is a lens that's typically popular with landscape, but not landscape, with um, with uh, wildlife photographers, sports photographers, people who want to get really close to the action. I kind of picked this up as kind of an experiment just to see what I could do with it with regard to landscape photography, because oftentimes it can be really, you know, hard to get close to a subject. And I personally just enjoy the art of creating uh, like abstract style landscape photos. I love shooting wide <laughs> open vistas more than, you know, just as much as anyone else. But at the same time, I also really love the telephoto, a really long telephoto like this 100 to 400. But man, I mean, that looks like that is going to be a very exciting lens. Really, uh, really interested to learn more about that one. Sounds like an amazing camera. I mean, <sighs> All I know is it's time to start saving up some money because uh, hopefully it'll come out before this summer, uh, maybe sometime around April. That would be pretty amazing. And uh, you know, so that can take advantage of it this summer and be shooting video with it, shooting some landscape photos too. And uh, it just, yeah, and just finally making that leap. All I know is it's going to be expensive and it's going to hurt, but <laughs> I think it's gonna be worth it. So, oh, by the way, um, so Friday is kind of my day for when I typically post videos to this channel. And Friday is tomorrow. So tomorrow on Friday, I have a new video going up where uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. This is going to be the biggest review video I've ever done. This one is going to be reviewing um, eight neutral density filters, all three stops, all solid, um, and I, I started doing this because I literally cannot decide which, which ND to buy. So I got eight of them and I started testing them, comparing them, running a bunch of tests indoors, outdoors, shooting photos, capturing video as well. And it's been really, really interesting. And I, and I think there's some very interesting results that come out of that video. And by the way, as a way of saying thank you to those of you who have uh, supported this channel who have you know left you know just really thoughtful comments and some very insightful comments too there's just been really fantastic comments and feedback which I've, I've really appreciated on my videos and also all the people who've been liking videos and those who have subscribed as well and have helped uh, grow the channel I just wanted to do something just to say thanks so uh, as part of the video about the ND filters tomorrow I'm going to be giving one of the top performing ND filters away for free. All you have to do is just you know, check out the video, uh, leave a comment on it. I'm going to be giving more information about that tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, come back tomorrow when the ND filter vi uh, video lands and um, yeah, and hopefully can uh, help you in your buying decision if you are shopping for a new solid ND. Me, I'm just, thrilled because I've always wondered what the difference is between all these different uh, NDs that are out there. And I just decided the only way I was ever gonna find out and find the one that was, I think the best, was to just test them all myself. So that's exactly what I did. At any rate, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to me rambling. Uh, and that's all I have to say for today. I'll see you tomorrow.